and welcome back to Life Leadership with Alex Rabina, right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. If you're just joining us, we just came, uh, actually, we just coming back from a break, but before we went on the break, we were talking to Sharon Rodriguez. Sharon is in studio today with us to get some coaching. She has, she's a mother of four beautiful daughters, uh, teenage daughters, and one young adult daughter. Now, uh, before you came into the studio, I asked you to do some self-reflection on the question, what is it that you want, or what's the experience you're looking for? And then, uh, then I asked you, uh, what was your answers? And as you were sharing your answers, some things were started to open up for you. And then also during the break, I asked you to be um, quiet and in silence and do some self-reflection. Um, and then I asked you, you know, what, what can come up with the conversation that we had uh, during while we were on air? What opened up for you now? What, what's opening up for you? What are you realizing? Well, when I looked at um, what the difference was that suddenly I was able to handle the last situation, buying the new car, and be at peace about it, one of the key things was that the shift of being indecision, where I had all these choices and I was afraid to make one. Um, although I think there was some timing in it that, that allowed it to show up the way it did, but um, I also realized that um, when I originally said I want peaceful, cooperative children, I need to be able to operate so they can cooperate with me. So if I'm not willing to do things around the house, or if I don't keep my room clean, then what makes them think they should? And so looking at that word cooperative really kind of, once again, put it back on me. And I've known that, but um, sometimes when you're trying to juggle four little kids as they're growing up and stuff, your, your focus is constantly being distracted. And so that's why I think sometimes women or moms have to multitask because we get interrupted and we have to remember what we were doing so we could help you know this little one who then the one that got hurt but we got to get back to the second one then the first one and then the fourth one and oh yeah absolutely and all their schedules and keeping track of everything yeah. and that kind of shifts us off of ourselves shifts us off of our right. own energy and then as, as they get older we put the responsibility we start delegating some of our responsibility onto them as they get older and um i know i've i've seen some of the evidence that's shown up like um well you used to always make me do this mom and i'm like but you could so oh, i needed you to do that so i could do work on the other three or whatever and so the other interesting thing i realized is that my three older ones have taken up so much attention going through junior high and high school that my littlest one um, who's 11 now, 11 and a half, kind of got left out of the loop. And she's a very independent child, a very imaginative. So she can go off on her own and be gone for hours. And in Colorado, we were on 13 acres, and she'd wander out to the creek, and she had her imaginary horses that, that are real because I could feel them. You know, I could sense them there and stuff. And so I finally told the older ones, I said, you know, it's her turn now. I've, you know, I've dro kind of feel like I dropped the ball with her. And so you guys are old enough, you know, you all three had jobs this summer. Um, and you, and that made a big difference because it made them responsible for themselves. And it allowed, that was one of the big shifts that just happened um, over the summer. And so um, my focus is kind of assisting the three older ones to continue to move into their independence and then help the little one kind of move out of her independence because she's been too independent. Um, when she was littler and kind of m developed more of a bond with her. And so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of shows up without having her become dependent on me, but just kind of develop more of a relationship with her, I guess. So I want to I want to go back to the part where you said you wanted uh, to experience a more peaceful kids. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a question I want to ask you. Um, what... What is the piece that you're looking for in, in, a, in base of an experience, right? Yes. What, what's stopping you from experiencing them as peaceful kids? What's getting in the way? Um, huh, that's an interesting question. I know that's why I asked it. Yeah. <laughs> ah. um, well, I guess if I'm, what I'm recognizing, because I can handle chaos really well. Um, and that for me, chaos and peace are different elements. And so I think the peacefulness, um, it's not not knowing that I'm on the right path or that I'm making, I'm headed in a direction that's going to serve me well. Um, and so 
you know, when I recognize the indecision, that's no direction at all. Because I'm, I keep looking at three, three or four different directions and can't decide where to go, you know. But so what I'm hearing you say, um, through my filters, is that you're, um, you're judging yourself all the time. As a mom, yes. So would you consider yourself a perfectionist? Um, Do things some, have to look a certain way to you? To some degree, my kids' behavior does. The house doesn't, you know, their clothes don't, but maybe they're the way they should treat me. I think I have certain expectations. Got it. Now, yeah. what do you know about expectations? They're usually not met. <laughs> yes, isn't that true? Yeah, because it's putting it. It once again is, uh, un, it's always putting it outside on somebody else. Usually, um, unless we're specific, because um, with I guess with ourselves we don't have expectations, um, because we don't know what we're capable of. We have goals and dreams and things we want to accomplish, but um, we don't necessarily set expectations on ourselves. Well, from my experience, every time I set expectations. And they don't match, and the, the results don't match up. I always set myself up to be disappointed. Right. 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 So what if I don't have expectations? What if I look at uh, all of the things that I'm committed to creating as I'm responsible for creating those, and I'm going to focus on creating that result, and that which doesn't show up like that just gets to be feedback about what's missing for me, and the things that I got to work on. So right. you could actually look at it as a positive then. Absolutely. Because then you could say, well, if I'm not getting the result, then I, that just means I need to shift or Absolutely. create something new or but, try something different. But I want to point out that who's making up the being disappointed? Who's creating that reality? Oh, yeah. I'm setting it up for myself. Very interesting. Who's, who's, right. who's in charge of, who's the meaning maker to all of this? Right, because I, yeah, I, it, and that's funny because I know You're not that answering the question. We, Who's the meaning maker to all of your reality? Me, because I'm the only one who gives a meaning to the event. And so... The so I'm going to ask the question one yeah. more time. Okay. And when you answer the question, just give me one word answer, and then I want you to sit with it. Okay. Who's the meaning maker to all of your reality? Myself. Okay, sit with that. We'll be right back. You're listening to Life Leadership with Alex Rabina right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. You want to rock?